on our journey. Anyone watch any football? Isaiah, chapter 35, 4 through 7a. Think about those cheerleaders and let this be the encouragement we need. Say to those who are a fearful heart, be strong, do not fear. Here is your God. He will come with vengeance and terrible recompense. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then the lame shall leap like a deer and the tongue of the speechless sing for joy. For water shall break forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become a pool and the thirsty ground springs of water. The haunt of jackals shall become a swamp and the grass shall become reeds and rushes. Do you feel the encouragement? And in James, chapter 5, 13 through 20, more coaching. Are any among you suffering? They should pray. Are any cheerful? They should sing songs of praise. Are any among you sick? They should call for the elders of the church and have them pray over them, anointing them with oil in the name of the Lord. The prayer of the faith will save the sick, and the Lord will raise them up, and anyone who has committed sins will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to one another, and pray for one another, so that you may be healed. The prayer of the righteous is powerful and effective. Elijah was a human being like us, and he prayed fervently that it might not rain. And for three years and six months, it did not rain on earth. Then he prayed again, and the heaven gave him rain, and the earth yielded its harvest. My brothers and sisters, if any among you wanders from the truth and is brought back by another, you should know that whoever brings back a sinner from wandering will save the sinner's soul from death and will cover a multitude of sins. Amen. Amen. There was once a bar that was built right next to a church that had been there for a while. And the people at the church got really irritated with the broken bottles that were in their parking lot, or if they had a meeting during the week, the loud noise that was coming from it, or occasional vandalism that occurred because of the bar patrons. So they began to pray at Sunday worship and all the members praying at home that God would destroy the bar. And the bar was struck by lightning and burnt to the ground. And the bar owner sued the church for the damages. And they went to court. And the judge said, this is really a peculiar situation where a bar owner believes in prayer and a church doesn't. <laughs> so James talked a lot about prayer. And in these verses in chapter 5, he said, it's the solution for almost everything. Are you suffering? Then pray. Are you cheerful? Then sing songs of prayer and praise. Are you sick? Call on the elders of the church, and they will pray over you, and they will anoint you with oil. Or if you feel guilty about something, pray a prayer of confession and figure out how to make it right whether it's illness or delight or disagreement or good times in your life or bad times, James' solution is to pray. But I want to tell you a little something about James. If you read the whole book of James, you know that he believes that faith is really about action. You know, it's a book about faith. But he says in parts of it, how does anybody know you have faith? They don't know you have faith unless they see your works. So he says, if somebody comes 
and they're hungry and they're cold and you pray, be warm and be fed, and you don't do anything, then your faith is worth nothing. So he basically says that uh, as we grow in our faith, it'll show by what we do. But he says the only way we're going to grow in our faith is by praying. We got to pray. That's what we need to do all the time is to pray. And he mentions a lot of different kinds of prayer. I mean, they're not names on them, you know, with number one, two, three, four, and five, so you can really count it up. But I'll tell you what they are. Prayers of thanksgiving, he talks about in the first chapter of the book of James. And he says that every good gift comes from God. We've got to be grateful for that. And the second kind of prayer is a prayer of praise. And we know it mentions that in those verses that we read. Prayers of praise. There's prayers of petition where we ask for something that we need. And it mentions that in this particular scripture where we ask God, you know, help me with this or that. Prayers of intercession where we pray for other people or we pray for a situation or we pray for the world or we pray for leaders. Those are prayers of intercession. And the last one is uh, prayers of confession where, you know, we know we did something and we're trying to find a way to uh, get right with God. And he basically says that you've got to weave all these kinds of prayer together and that creates life in the spirit as a whole. So if we're praying to God for something we need and that's the only kind of prayer that we do, then God is kind of like a, an ATM or a vending machine. If we include prayers of praise to God, oh God, thank you for who you are, and prayers of thanksgiving, God, thank you for what you've done for me, and we begin to notice what God has done, and we're more able to observe it in our lives, then we might have our eyes open to see that God has answered our prayer and we didn't even realize it, because we know that... Um, that God doesn't always answer the prayer in exactly the way we expect God to answer the prayer. And uh, if we're going to ask God, pray to God for something, we also need to be open to confession. Because sometimes the very thing that uh, needs to change in a situation is us. You know, sometimes... It isn't that thing we're praying for, that person we're praying for that needs to change. Sometimes it's us. And the thing about confession is the time that we need to confess the most is when we think, you know what, I didn't do anything wrong. It's all their fault because they're the one that did everything to me and they really hurt me and blah, 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 blah. That's the time that we need to say, okay, maybe they did do me wrong, but what could I have done differently or what is my part in it? You know, sometimes that prayer of confession just opens our heart in a new way and heals us in a new way so that we can act differently in a situation and it just changes. So we got to have the praise and the thanksgiving to keep our eyes open to the good things and the way God's already answering our prayer. We pray prayers of petition to just lift it up to God and give it to God. We pray prayers of intercession. Because when we pray for each other, when you pray for me and I pray for you, that brings us closer together in a community and that makes everything more powerful, all the prayer more powerful. And then, you know, we got to pray those prayers of confession. And if you practice praying, you know that prayer is a long game. You know what I'm saying? Like, I might pray today when I'm driving along to get a good parking spot. And I might just get a good parking spot. But I almost, if I pray, I might get the sense that God is saying, you know, honey, I'm going to give you a parking spot way away because you need more exercise. So you need to walk to that. That's the way God might answer that prayer. Or God might be saying, if you wanted a good parking spot, you should have left 15 minutes earlier. So if you walk that far, maybe you'll remember that next time. But for those incredibly difficult things in our lives, there are no instant solutions. You know, there's a, there's a long game about prayer. 
that you keep praying for that situation that seems insurmountable, and you discover over the years the way God is unraveling it and the way God is working in it and the way God is making it better. And that's the incredible thing about prayer. And at this age in my life, I've seen so many prayers that I never thought would be answered answered in, miracula, in miraculous ways and sometimes 10 or 20 years after I started praying that prayer. So I want to... I've had some experiences of answered prayer, but I want to ask you what your experiences are of answered prayer. Where's Ernie? There you are, yeah. You told us last week about your amazing experience of praying to have a better relationship with your son, and your grandson had just called you. Just out of the, pardon me? Granddaughter. Granddaughter. Your granddaughter called you. That's that's incredible. But you were well. Praise God, and you've been praying that prayer for a very, very long time, and God has answered it in a way you didn't expect. Do you have other? Yes, Jenny. Yes, when Jenny has been well for five years, and you remember when she was diagnosed. Um, how it didn't seem like it was going to be a very good outlook. Yeah. What are your other prayers that, yes? When we went down to where we weren't sure we were going to be able to live. Yes, when Jerry and Jan weren't sure if they'd have a home to live in. And God answered the prayer in amazing ways so that the place you are is even better than you ever imagined. Yeah. What else? Yes. Yes, um, the Johnson's journey of a family. And you thought this was it, and that one fell apart, and then you received the blessing of the family that you were meant to have. Yeah, that's amazing. Anyone else? Yes. When Kay was diagnosed with uh, multiple myeloma, she said a lot of prayers. Amen. That prayer for healing and acknowledgement, Lord, thy will be done. Whatever it is you want out of this. Anyone in the choir want to share anything about a prayer? Yeah. Just like with our church family for law, you know, that's the audience of Christ. Everybody prays that our church is going to grow and be successful. And look at our beautiful sanctuary. Our Sunday school has grown. We got some good members. Our choir is growing. So everybody praying together as one body of Christ. All those prayers every week and even throughout the week. I mean, this this really shows. And we have definitely grown. And we're continuing to grow as a family. Amen. So so the prayer, not just for some difficult time in our life, but a prayer for God to help us grow. Help us grow in numbers and in spirit and in faith for each of us. So uh, I know that there are some situations that you're thinking about that you prayed about and that God answered those prayers, but they're too personal for you to tell to the whole church community and stand up right now. But we lift all of those up to God and know what a miracle it is that we've experience the power of prayer in our lives. So uh, try it. You'll like it. (laughs) Because if it's good, give it to God. If it's just a big mess and you have no idea how you're going to fix it, just give it to God. If you broke it and everybody's mad at you, just give it to God. If it's holy and sacred, Just give it to God. If it's so wonderful you want to jump up and down and shout and sing, then praise God. Amen.